Hey there, welcome. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at matching headings questions in the IELTS reading test. This is one of the question types that students find the most difficult, but I'm going to be showing you some useful tips and tricks and a strategy to help you do this very well in your upcoming IELTS test. So as always, when you start the IELTS reading test, the first thing you're going to do is go to passage one and then glance at the question and identify what the question is. In this case, we have a matching headings question. So we're going to look at it, we're going to acknowledge it, but then we're going to move immediately to the text. And we're going to read this text, but the way we read it is important. We're going to read for gist, which means we're going to read quickly, we're going to get a general understanding of the text. We're going to understand the layout, so where information is in the text. And we're also going to be quickly highlighting words as we read. This is going to help us locate answers later on and also to make sure that our mind doesn't wander and start thinking about something else. So here's the text. Read it quickly. If this is difficult to see, then I'm going to make it a bit larger for you. You can always pause the video at different parts so that you can read it. If that's still difficult for you or you want to practice highlighting the words, then you can also download a PDF of this text. So read quickly, highlight the words, you're reading for a gist, a general understanding. Let's look at it together. So here are the words that I've highlighted. Now, if we've highlighted different words, that's totally fine. The purpose of the highlighting is just to help us focus in on the text. So we're going to be highlighting different words. Now we look at the matching headings question. Now there are three parts. We've got the instructions at the top. Now these are always the same or more or less the same. So Pay attention to these instructions now so that in your IELTS reading test, you can just glance at them, read them quickly, but you don't need to spend time working them out. Then we've got our list of headings. Now you'll notice we have 10 headings, but when we look at our paragraphs below, we only have seven paragraphs. This is typical. There's often more headings than we need. So what's our strategy? Well, first of all, we're going to read all of the headings and we're going to underline keywords in those headings. Then we're going to read each paragraph, especially focusing on the first and last sentence of the paragraph, because this is usually where we can find the answer. When writers are writing an article or a text, they want to make the paragraph clear to the person reading it. So they often put the topic sentence at the very beginning, which tells the reader what it's about. As a result, we can find the answer in the first sentence often. Not always, but often. Now remember, there are more headings than you need, so don't get alarmed. And if you don't know the answer, just guess. Or you could always leave a question mark and return to it later. Or for example, if you're not sure between two, again, leave it till the end, but make sure you write an answer in in because you don't get or you don't lose marks if you get an answer wrong. So it's always worth having a guess if you're not sure. Okay, so here's the list of headings. Which words would you underline or which words would you highlight? Pause the video now, choose what you're going to highlight. If you're doing it on a PDF, highlight the words. Here's what I've highlighted. You can see I've highlighted quite a lot. Again, we're going to be highlighting different things. This is what helps me to focus in on the different headings. Now here's a tip. As you read through the headings, you might already have an idea of which paragraph some of the headings match with. Do these ones first. So for example, when I wrote, read the heading seven, definitions of crowding and density, I thought, I know where the answer is. I know which paragraph this is. So I would do that question first because as a result, I can begin to eliminate the different headings. But because we're going to do this together, we're going to start at A. So we've got paragraph A, we've got our list of headings, and we've got our questions, number one to seven. Pause the video and choose which heading is the correct heading for paragraph A. 
Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and you've made your decision. Let's go through it together. So what I'm going to do is quickly read through paragraph A. I'm going to focus on the first and the last sentence especially, and then I'm going to go through the list of headings. So number one, number two, number three, number four. Now number four is interesting because we've got this word problems. It appears in the heading and it also appears in the text. So I'm going to make a note of that. Maybe I'll put a circle on the question paper. But I'm not going to just say that that's the answer. I'm going to read through the rest of the headings to see if any of them are applicable. In this case, none of them are applicable, so I think it's four. Is it four? Again, if, you're not, if you haven't chosen the answer, pause the video, choose for yourself. Yes, I think this is the answer because of the first and last sentence. I think the answer is heading four. Why? Well, the beginning of the text has the phrase, phrase myriad of problems. Myriad means many, so many problems, and introduces three trends, so three significant trends. Now, at the end, it mentions how these three trends are producing increased crowding. So producing in the text and result in, so result in crowding, are synonym phrases. So they're not the exact same word, but they're synonym phrases. So as a result, the answer is four. This is a good heading for this paragraph. We're going to score that out and we're going to move on now to paragraph B. Pause the video, choose the correct heading. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video. Hopefully you've chosen a heading. Let's do it together. So I've read the paragraph. I've looked at the first sentence and the last sentence especially, and now I go through this list of headings. So could it be these? Not sure. Now, when I see the word psychological, something happens. Psychological reaction to crowding, I've got that in the heading. I've also got the word psychological down at the bottom in the text. Could this be the answer? Possibly. Let's look through the rest of the headings just to be sure. Now, when I see heading seven, something also clicks. Definitions of crowding and density. Well, in the first sentence, it says how crowding and density are not the same. And then there's mention of density and there's mention of crowding. So that could be the answer. Let's look at the other opportunities or the other possibilities. Okay, I think it's between these two. Which one do you think it is? Okay, the answer is seven. Why is it seven? Definitions of crowding and density. Because the beginning states that crowding and density are not necessarily the same. And then after that, there is a definition of density and then a definition of crowding. So we've got a definition of each one. As a result, seven is the correct answer. There is mention of psych psychology, but there's not a psychological reaction. It says psychological phenomenon, slight difference. Hey there, if you like this activity, then definitely check out EnglishProTips.com where you can get more activities like this to help you with IELTS reading, but also IELTS listening, IELTS writing, IELTS speaking. Check out EnglishProTips.com and start your learning for free. And if you like it, upgrade to the premium membership to get access to all of my IELTS study materials. See you later. Okay, C. Pause the video, choose the correct answer, and then we'll look through together. Okay, here is where the answer is. In this case, it's slightly in the first sentence, but mainly in the middle. So it's not always in the first and last sentence. The correct answer is, I hope you've gone through the list and you've chosen which one you think it is. It's 10, nature and result of Calhoun's experiment. So you have noticed from the word Calhoun that it could possibly be number one or it could be number 10. In this case, it's 10. The beginning shows that this paragraph outlines a study by Calhoun. The phrase, a number of negative conditions developed shows us the results of the experiment. So a number of negative conditions developed is in the text and then results of Calhoun's experiment is in the heading. So the answer is 10. So we're gonna score that out and move on to paragraph D. Pause the video, choose the correct answer, and then we're gonna go through it together. 
Okay, I think the answer is here. Do you think the answer is there? If you don't, then pause the video again and, and work out why the answer is there. In this case, it's number one. Other experiments following Calhoun's experiment offering a clearer indication. Now, why? So this paragraph looks at other research, so research and experiments, as a result of Calhoun's study. This other research, which looks at humans, better predicts the negative effects. So therefore, it offers a clear indication. It better predicts the negative effects. Score that out and move on to paragraph E. Pause the video, choose the correct answer, then we'll look at it together. Pause the video. Okay, so I think the answer is here. <clears throat> okay. The answer in this case is six. What causes the upset feeling of crowding? Why? Well, this paragraph looks at the several reasons why crowding makes us feel uncomfortable. Okay, so what causes, what causes is in the heading, is linked with reasons, several reasons, which is in the text. And the word uncomfortable, which is in the text, look relates to the feeling of upset which we have in the heading so six is a logical heading for paragraph e let's move on to paragraph f a much longer paragraph in fact this is two paragraphs combined what is a logical heading for this paragraph pause the video and make the decision for yourself and then we'll go through it together okay the answer is here the answer is number two, the effects of crowding on people in the social scope, because social density, which is in the text, relates to social scope, which is in the heading, and negative effects on human beings in the text relates to effects of crowding on people. So human beings and people are synonyms. Now, careful, some of you may have written that the answer is number nine, differences between male and female's attractiveness in a crowd. Now this paragraph does mention that, however, it mentions that as an example. It's not a general heading for the text. Don't get confused between details and what headings show, which is a general um, introduction to the uh, paragraph. Remember, when a writer writes down a heading for a paragraph, they're doing that to make it easier for the reader to understand that paragraph. So as a result, it's going to be a general description of that paragraph. Finally, we have G. Pause the video, choose the correct answer. Okay, the answer is here. So if you didn't think the answer was here, then pause it again and work out why the answer is there. The answer is number eight, advice for the crowded living environment. Now, why is that the case? Well, the topic sentence, which is the first sentence, or in this case, first two sentences, gives the idea that this paragraph would answer the question, what are we going to do with them? So what is them? Them is referring to problems. And then the rest of the paragraph offers advice on how to deal with overcrowding. So we've got the paragraph advice for the crowded living environment. Okay continue. Even though we've done um, our questions, the learning does not stop now. In fact, this is the real learning. What we're going to do now is listen to, the, to an audio version of the text. This is going to help us um, improve our listening, improve our pronunciation, and improve our vocabulary. We're going to go over the questions you got wrong, or rather you are, I'm not, because I don't know which questions you got wrong. You're going to make a note of some new vocabulary. So for example, not every word that's new, but maybe one or two or three or four words that would have helped you get the right answer. And then you're going to recap what you've learned today. Just take a second to say, what have I learned today? And then you're going to put in your diary that you're going to do this test again in one to four weeks. Repetition helps. Okay, so let's continue now with listening to an audio version of the text. Of the great myriad of problems which man and the world face today, there are three significant trends which stand above all others in importance. 
the unprecedented population growth throughout the world, a net increase of 1,400,000 ,000 people per week, and all of its associations and consequences. The increasing urbanization of these people, so that more and more of them are rushing into cities and urban areas of the world, and the tremendous explosion of communication and social contact throughout the world, so that every part of the world is now aware of every other part. All of these trends are producing increased crowding and the perception of crowding. It is important to emphasize at the outset that crowding and density are not necessarily the same. Density is the number of individuals per unit area or unit space. It is a simple physical measurement. Crowding is a product of density, communication, contact, and activity. It implies a pressure, a force, and a psychological reaction. It may occur at widely different densities. The frontiersman may have felt crowded when someone built a homestead a mile away. The suburbanite may feel relatively uncrowded in a small house on a half-acre lot if it is surrounded by trees, bushes, and a hedgerow, even though he lives under much higher physical density than did the frontiersman. Hence, crowding is very much a psychological and ecological phenomenon, and not just a physical condition. A classic crowding study was done by Calhoun, 1962 who put rats into a physical environment designed to accommodate 50 rats and provided enough food, water, and nesting materials for the number of rats in the environment. The rat population peaked at 80, providing a look at cramped living conditions. Although the rats experienced no resource limitations other than space restriction, a number of negative conditions developed. The two most dominant males took harems of several female rats and occupied more than their share of space, leaving other rats even more crowded. Many females stopped building nests and abandoned their infant rats. The pregnancy rate declined. Infant and adult mortality rates increased. More aggressive and physical attacks occurred. Sexual variation increased, including hypersexuality, inhibited sexuality, homosexuality, and bisexuality. Calhoun's results have led to other research on crowding's effect on human beings. And these research findings have suggested that high density is not the single cause of negative effects on humans. When crowding is defined only in terms of spatial density, the amount of space per person, the effects of crowding are variable. However, if crowding is defined in terms of social density, or the number of people who must interact, then crowding better predicts negative psychological and physical effects. There are several reasons why crowding makes us feel uncomfortable. One reason is related to stimulus overload. There are just too many stimuli competing for our attention. We cannot notice or respond to all of them. This feeling is typical of the harried mother who has several children competing for her attention while she is on the phone and the doorbell is ringing. This leaves her feeling confused, fatigued, and yearning to withdraw from the situation. There are strong feelings of a lack of privacy, being unable to pay attention to what you want without being repeatedly interrupted or observed by others. Field studies done in a variety of settings illustrate that social density is associated with negative effects on human beings. In prison studies, males generally became more aggressive with increases in density. In male prisons, inmates living in conditions of higher densities were more likely to suffer from the fight. Males rated themselves as more aggressive in small rooms, a situation of high spatial density whilst the females rated themselves as more aggressive in large rooms, Stokholz et al., 1973. These differences relate to the different personal space requirements of the genders. Besides, Baum and Greenberg found that high density leads to decreased attraction, both physical attraction and liking towards others, and it appears to have gender differences in the impact that density has on attraction levels, with males experiencing a more extreme reaction. Also. The greater the density is, the less the helping behavior. One reason why the level of helping behavior may be reduced in crowded situations links to the concept of diffusion of responsibility. The more people that are present in a situation that requires help, the less often help is given. This may be due to the fact that people diffuse responsibility among themselves with no one feeling that they ought to be the one to help. Facing all these problems, what are we going to do with them? The more control a person has over the crowded environment, the less negatively they experience it. 
thus the perceived crowding is less, Schmidt and Keating. The ability to cope with crowding is also influenced by the relationship the individual has with the other people in the situation. The high density will be interpreted less negatively if the individual experiences it with people he likes. One of the main coping strategies employed to limit the impact of high density is social withdrawal. This includes behaviours such as averting the gaze and using negative body language to attempt to block any potential intrusions. Okay, thank you very much for studying with me. I hope this has helped you answer those pesky matching headings questions. Good luck with all of your studies and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye then.